Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and may I, on behalf of the Caribbean Microfinance Alliance and uh, City Foundation, uh, welcome you to this very special evening. It is a very important evening of the many functions happening in the city tonight. This is most important. Um, the subject matter that we're all here to talk about this evening is extraordinarily important, not just to Jamaica, uh, but to all the economies of the Caribbean. And of course, we're very happy to be in the great building of City Jamaica. I know many of you have wanted to come here, <laughs> like myself. So any excuse to get here. Um, and so we're all here this evening. So I want to thank, in particular, Mr. Peter Moses and the team here at City Jamaica for so graciously hosting us. And it's my pleasure to ask Mr. Peter Moses to officially welcome us. So Mr. Moses. As some of you may know, the CMFA is a beneficiary of the Caribbean Microfinance Capacity Building Project, jointly funded by the Multilateral Investment Fund a member of the Inter-American Development Bank Group, the European Commission, the Caribbean Development Bank, and of course, I have to put a plug in, City Foundation. The City CMFA Caribbean Microfinance Awards Program is financed by the City Foundation, which is located internationally in New York, and administered by the Caribbean Microfinance Alliance, CMFA, a network of over 20 microfinance pra practitioners and advocates working to promote the development of responsible and sustainable industry in the region. Over the past three years, Citibank and City Foundation have invested over US 16 million to enhance the capacity of organizations serving the network of micro entrepreneurs across Latin America and the Caribbean. This has, thank you. This has included the development of the new financial products and institutional capacity building programs for microfinance institutions and their networks. City's goal is to build strategic partnerships capable of reaching the scale necessary to tackle the more relevant social issues in each market and region we operate. I'd just like to pause there to say as, as I'm sure you all know here, our business strategy in Jamaica is one of corporate banking. Not necessarily because we don't have our appreciation for commercial banking and retail banking and consumer banking. We feel that we can make our contribution better at the corporate level based on the capacity that is already served in those other areas. But it does not stop us from getting involved in this level, because we do recognize that this is really where an economy gets the churn for growth. Yeah? So we're very happy to be in this space. Our partnership with the CMFA and IDB MIF is a strong example of this, and this is a part of City's commitment to the economic empowerment and financial inclusion of the communities where we live and work. Sp placing a special focus on young adults in, ad in urban settings in our hope to create sustainable livelihood opportunities for our youth. The microfinance industry has the power to transform and strengthen individuals willing to pursue their dreams of economic independence. I've seen that for three years in a row. It is more so than dysfunction, which is very enlightening and very enjoyable. The real enlightenment to me has been when the awards are being made, the function where we recognize the selectees, and you actually get to practically experience with them what they have done. This is a great launch, but try to come back to the, the, the occasion when we recognize the winners, and not only the winners, but all of the people who have participated and are great examples of what is really going to make our region and by extension, our country, as great as the potential that we have. 
City believes that a broad and solid micro entrepreneurial base is a key factor to secure long term viability of our regional economies and a very ve effective source of social economic value. I want to close by thanking our partners and congratulating them in their efforts in fostering and highlighting a strong microfinance industry in the Caribbean. It is indeed an honor for Citibank to be associated with this program. It is very fulfilling for me personally to be associated with this program through the position I hold in the bank. I want to thank Ruth Malcolm, who is really my boss, <laughs> for helping to coordinate every year our activities in this program and all the other people who work together to make this happen every year. And we really hope and look forward to continuing our, with our association with the program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Moses and Ruth for being Mr. Moses' boss. <laughs> I hope we'll see you in Miami to come and help us to pull off a great event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, much of the pivot points I'm sure you will hear in all of the other persons to speak, including Mr. Moses, who has just spoken, you know, are pivot points about development, social inclusion, financial inclusion, access to credit. All these are very important points that are underscored in the program that we're trying to assemble for discussion and distillation in Miami which will be a sort of coming out party, so to speak, for Caribbean Microfinance Alliance. Well, we're very happy that Ramesh Prasad has traveled all the way from Guyana to be with us uh, this evening. Uh, uh, Ramesh is also the president of the, the private sector organization um, in Guyana, so he's pretty much a man of rank in the private sector. He's also chairman of the Alliance, and it's my pleasure to invite him to bring brief remarks. I'd like to recognize uh, the Honorable Minister. I had the opportunity to meet him this morning, and he promptly invited me to the launch of the Small Business Expo. I'd like to say thank you, and thank you for being here tonight, Minister Anthony Hilton, and Ms. Therese Turner-Jones. Uh, I'd like to recognize you for contributing to giving birth to the CMFA. All right, uh, for those of you who would understand that, and thank you to Mr. Peter Moses for accommodating us uh, tonight and uh, for being our partner in the process. So on behalf of the Caribbean Microfinance Alliance and our members, I would like to thank all of you for joining us tonight at the launch of the microfinance industries, at least within the region, our premier annual regional event. I think next year it will be rivaled with the Forumic which is supposed to be held in Montego Bay, Jamaica. So I think you should give the IDB a round of applause for bringing their premier event to Jamaica. So our event will be held in Miami on June 6th to 9th under the team Microfinance Solutions for Inclusive Growth. Access to, micro, access to finance continues to be one of the many challenges encountered by micro, small, and medium entrepreneurs within the region. And as an issue, it has gained significant attention from policymakers region-wide. It is the intent of the CMFA to continue to contribute to this dialogue so that its members can be in the forefront of innovation and development within the microfinance sector. This is one of the main reasons for having an annual forum so as to keep our members up to date and current on issues shaping the industry. The CMFA's main objectives are to promote the development of microfinance industry, and to promote responsible practices within the sector. The CMFA currently has 25 members from nine countries. Our members have invested over US $34 million to serve over 22,000 micro entrepreneurs within those uh, markets. It is estimated at minimum that those micro enterprises provide full-time employment for no less than 50,000 persons within the region. Um, that's no insignificant uh, number. So they're making a contribution, and these are estimates, but fairly good ones. These numbers are from our membership only, and our membership serve less than 50% of the small and micro business sector within the, within the region. And uh, 
if we're getting numbers from less than 50% and it looks so good, you could imagine the importance of the sector within the entire Caribbean region. So there's no doubt that SMEs are important and integral for the growth and development of our economy. And the numbers provided certainly underline or highlights that, that fact. It is said that the private sector is the engine of growth in the economy. So if the private sector is the engine of growth, micro, small, and medium enterprises are the piston, pistons of that engine. And the government is the lubricant <laughs> to make it work, all right? The potential within the region is still great, and the market is still somewhat uh, underserved. A recent study done in Jamaica, Guyana, Suriname, and Belize by EA Consultant, study commissioned by the Multilateral Investment Fund of the IDB, estimated that the potential market size within these countries alone range between 91,000 to 150,000. It's very good when economists do these large ranges. So we could have good data to work with. With Jamaica accounting for more than 50% of that total potential, and I don't think I need to explain to you why that is the case. These numbers clearly indicate that the market is being underserved by the current players and that there is need for innovation in product development to meet the needs of that underserved segment. In my discussion with the minister, he spoke there about appropriate means of finance and not just debt financing, but I'm sure he's going to expand on that at some other time, if not tonight. Jamaica has been in the forefront in the region with their SME policy, Security Interest in Personal Property Act. I don't think anybody else in the region has that, so that's leading the way. And uh, I'm also impressed with the various business support and advisory initiatives to promote the growth and development of small business within the sector. So as I was mentioning earlier, I was happy to be at the launch of the Jamaica Business Development Corporation Small Business Expo this morning, and it highlights uh, the importance of small business is playing in the, in the economy and your government's commitment uh, to that process. On behalf of the CMFA, I would like to fully endorse the Expo and encourage full participation by the small businesses within Jamaica and all the other stakeholders within the, within the region. I do hope that uh, this, the objectives are fully achieved and the necessary benefits accrue to the entrepreneurs that will partake in that uh, expo. Our forum this year will focus on microfinance solutions for inclusive growth. Inclusive growth, the principles are intended to focus on wealth creation for members in all strata of society. Many of our governments within the region, they focus on poverty reduction. Um, you might want to say wealth creation is the same is the same thing, but with a different name. Um, but sometimes people are worried and scared about talking creation of, uh, of wealth. We believe the development of micro businesses, small businesses, is gonna significantly contribute to the reduction of poverty within the region. The forum will focus on access to finance issues in this regard. In so doing, emphasis will be placed on policy making, locally, regionally, and globally. Uh, we will also be having discussions on financing for inclusive growth, facilitating financing with technology solutions, and meeting the needs of our youth population. As part of the forum, we will also be having the City CMFA Award Ceremony for the Best Micro Entrepreneur of the Year, the most responsible microfinance institution, and an outstanding, and the recognition of an outstanding microfinance leader within the region. At the forum, we are targeting to have 200 participants, looking as though we will get there. We do look forward for the support from all stakeholders, especially the micro entrepreneurs. The forum is not meant only for the suppliers of credit and other services, but we would like to encourage entrepreneurs to also attend and for entities providing those services to encourage them to attend because we can't have a conversation about them without them. Miami is our destination this year. It represents the gateway to the region and the rest of the world. This seems timely as many countries within the region have started the conversation on how to leverage the resources of the diaspora 
and their inclusion in local development. I understand that Jamaica will be having a diaspora conference later this year. So I believe the forum is within the current trend and fashion of the times, that is leveraging the diaspora resources and our focus on inclusive uh, growth. I will also give our, sorry, it would also give our participants who are mostly from within the region an opportunity to leverage new ideas and uh, resources. As a practitioner within the microfinance sector, I've joined microfinance about nine years ago. And each of those nine years, once there was a forum, a round table, I would have attended all of them. And each year, I took away something different, some new principles, some new concept. I see some people here that I've met since the first forum that I attended right here in Jamaica and Montego Bay. So the forum brings great value to leaders and other stakeholders within the, within the sector. So I encourage you to partake. This is the sixth time that the forum will be held, but it is the first time that it will be fully organized by the CMFA as the previous five were held under the auspices of the Caribbean Capacity Building Project, famously known as the CARP CAP, funded by IDB, CDB, EU, and the City Foundation. This project was intended to improve the capacities of the suppliers of credit within the region, more particularly microcredit within the region, to better serve microenterprise market. It also assisted with the development of the entrepreneur on the demand side. During that program, financial education training were provided to over 5,000 micro entrepreneurs, and uh, most of them were from Jamaica. All right, so I think that would have been a good thing. And we are also currently working for the launch at our forum of uh, videos of these training to be online so clients could access them at their own uh, free time. The CMFA is also a product of the CARB CAP project and is intended to be the sustainability or the sustainable element out of the project to build on the foundation put in place by the project. In this regard, we would like to thank the Multilateral Investment Fund, the IADB, CDB, and the EU for their past support. We would also like to give special recognition to City Foundation for being a past sponsor and a current sponsor, and potentially a future sponsor. All right, along with all our other previous uh, partners. I would also like to recognize City Jamaica for graciously, graciously allowing us to use this facility this evening. I would also like to thank some new sponsors, and I would just like to make this known that we are still looking for more sponsors. So if you're out there and you're willing to sponsor, um, as I said, this is the first time we are on our own. Um, so we are having to do almost everything ourselves in leveraging all resources, so we need, we, we need your assistance. So looking forward for that. Uh, I believe tonight's event is the launch of something great that is going to happen, and we do look forward for that uh, uh, to take place. I would like to acknowledge the presence of all of you from the media. It is meant to be a media launch, and I would like to thank you all in advance for helping us to share the message with regards to this forum and developments taking place within the industry, within the Caribbean, or within the microfinance industry. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. I do look forward to a successful forum this year. Thank you very much. Now, we have been referring to the IDB all evening in the conversations as a mother of the, I don't know if Therese wants to be so categorized or <laughs> described, but we're very happy that the IDB has given so much of its effort, time, and technical expertise to bring the CMFA to where it is today. And it's my pleasure to invite Therese Turner-Jones, country representative for IDB Jamaica, to address us. Thank you, Mark. Um, Minister Hilton, nice to see you again. Peter, thanks for hosting us. Ramesh, wonderful media. Everybody is here. Thanks for being here. I was thinking about whether this analogy of giving birth is the right one, <laughs> or whether it's because, you know, once you have a child, it's about 30 year, <laughs> at least 30 years, right? I have a 30 year old and she's still kind of dependent on me. <laughs> S or is it that I've, you know, she's graduated now and I can look for some returns on that investment. <laughs> um, but as you've put out for more sponsors, I probably think it's, the former, not the latter, right? But in any case, it's a really proud moment for the IDB and the MIF especially, and Wayne Beecher is back there. He does all the hard work um, on this to be um, here at this launch. 
Thank you, Wayne. Wayne works really hard. Um, our MIF specialist in our office. Um, you know, there isn't a whole lot to add except a couple of sobering notes. Um, I just want to say that given that microfinance was launched in Jamaica over 30 years ago, which also ties in with my, <laughs> <laughs> my, my kid, um, there's still only a 7% penetration in terms of, you know, microfinance um, in Jamaica. So of the 40,000 microenterprises that are being served by microfinance, the, the market is still a good, you know, half a million. So we're not anywhere there where we need to be. Um, so that's, there's still a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot of money, I think, to be made in this business. Um, but I want to break a little bit of ground today and say something that may be a little bit challenging. Because I see this whole notion of inclusive growth and um, the development of the next breed, so to speak, of entrepreneurs and industrial greats in Jamaica as um, having a, a very different, um, this is going to be hard to say, a different complexion from what we're used to seeing in Jamaica. So I'd like to say that it's through this kind of organization and capacity building that's growing up around the microfinance um, industry that we're going to breed the next set of Glenn Christians and women entrepreneurs in Jamaica, right? So I think this is really important. Um, it's a very, I know, it's a, it's a hard topic to address because um, in a country that is predominantly of a certain um, ethnic origin, I think it looks odd when champions and the big champions of business are of a, of a different hue from the majority. So I think what we're doing is setting the ground, creating opportunities for every Jamaican, no matter their backgrounds, to participate in the economic um, possibilities of the country. Um, so I think that's really what's important about this movement in the Caribbean is to have entrepreneurship and the whole possibility of owning your own business and developing businesses as an aspiration for everybody, it doesn't matter where you come from. So um, this is really important work. And by the way, this is a very important piece of the work that the IDB does. Um, the IDB is very big on diversity and inclusion. Um, some of you may know that countries like Brazil, Venezuela, Colombia have a huge um, African population. However, if you were to see what's projected as a Brazilian or a Colombian or a Venezuelan, those aren't the people that you see. But the bank is making a very big effort to make sure that every ethnic group is, is represented in the work that the bank does and that when we talk about improving lives, we're talking about improving lives for everybody. So um, we're proud to be a partner in this. Um, I'd like to congratulate Ramesh, um, and we look forward to, under your leadership, what happens in the conference that's coming up um, in a couple of months. And again, to put a plug in for Forum Week, which will be the big, the bank's real big event around microfinance, which will be hosted by Jamaica in Montego Bay next year in October. We're very excited. Um, Forum Week this year is being held in Chile, and the Jamaicans will have a very big presence because we will host the final event, uh, basically to launch Jamaica um, as the next uh, place for this event. Um, you know, there's a lot to be done, but um, I think Jamaica is at that point where, apart from all of the work being done by the government to improve the macroeconomic environment, the private sector really also has to do its work to pull its weight, and I think this is a really good start. Um, there are lots of very positives about this moment in Jamaica's economic history, also in the Caribbean too, to take advantage of. Um, and I think there are opportunities to be reaped, and we just need to continue doing the hard work because it doesn't come by quick solutions, but by doing a lot of hard work building the foundations, and making sure that people are equipped to do the jobs that they need to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Turner-Jones. We're very happy that the minister is here with us this evening. 
and not only the minister, but a very strong contingent from the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. I know the ministry is very, very invested in the subject matter of microfinance and uh, the MSME sector. Jamaica does have an MSME policy, which is a good thing. And I should say an MSME and entrepreneurship policy, just to make that important uh, distinction. So please help me welcome the minister to, to give us his remarks. Mr. Peter Moses, the country officer of Citibank, or City Jamaica. Mr. Ramesh Prasad, Chairman of Caribbean Microfinance Alliance, and seemed like we met some time ago. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Therese Turner Jones, the country representative, the Inter American Development Bank, Jamaica. Mrs. Michelle Scott, the executive director of the Caribbean Microfinance Alliance. Members of the private sector, of which there are many here today, too, too many to, to mention. I see members of academia as well. I see members from the, um, the consular from the diplomatic corps, heads of agency, and I want to particularly mention Ms. Valerie Vieira because she leads an effort that I think is very, very relevant to today's activities and her launch today as a seminal. So. Entrepreneurs all, members of the media, and special invited guests. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. I really want to begin by thanking you for the opportunity to speak at the launch of the sixth stage of the Caribbean Microfinance Forum and Microfinance Awards. The setting here at Citibank, though not exactly a microfinance entity, but an important player in the finance sector is as good a place to continue the dialogue on this issue affecting this very important sector. Caribbean Microfinance Alliance has, over the years, proven itself as a leading advocate for the provision of effective and sustainable microfinance services to poor households in the Caribbean. I therefore commend the organization for its continued drive in fulfilling this mission through its capacity building initiatives, financial education programs, and its yearly performance report on the regional microfinance sector. All of these are bellwether events um, and really need to be taken on board more fulsomely by all the players involved in this activity. I will also take this opportunity to commend the Inter-American Development Bank for, its, for the support that they have shown towards the development of microfinance sector in the Caribbean. And we heard this evening that it is beyond the Caribbean, really throughout the hemisphere. Key, yeah, I think that deserves a round of applause. Key among its initiatives is the hosting of Forumic, a yearly event geared at creating a space for discussing issues related to the development and, and microfinancing of micro and small enterprises in Latin America and the Caribbean. And we heard, and we all should look forward to the hosting of this signature event in Montego Bay next year. The pace of development of the Caribbean microfinance industry is affected by the small scale of operations due to smaller markets, higher levels of informality, and high delinquency rates. The Caribbean as a whole, and Jamaica in particular, has much to do towards the development of this sector. And the data just mentioned by Therese um, is worthwhile, that notwithstanding the efforts made, and there have been some gallant efforts, commendable efforts, we've only had 7% penetration of this sector. That is salutary. And when I keep speaking about it, and those keep looking at me askance, as if I, why are you talking about this? That's the reason. We can't have 7% penetration and believe we're making a dent at the base of the economy and society. 
As Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, microfinance is of signal importance to me and the administration of which I'm a part. I therefore view today's launch as an opportunity to highlight the role of the micro sector in driving growth and economic inclusiveness as part of the logistics hub initiative and by extension, the logistics centered economy. Ladies and gentlemen, the logistics hub initiative is the nucleus of a framework to include strategic investments and improved business environment, workforce training, further development of the maritime aviation and ICT infrastructure, and linkages of the MSME sector. At present, efforts are underway to create a sustainable special economic zone regime with backward linkages to the Jamaican economy through MSMEs. This will be achieved through the facilitation of business linkages of MSMEs with large-scale enterprises, enabling them to participate in global supply chains. We're all too aware that MSMEs, and specifically the microsector, are only as strong as the measures in place to nurture and assist in their development. To this end, we implemented the MSME and entrepreneurship policy as a clear plan of action for the preparedness, preparedness and incorporation of the sector as we move forward with the Logistics Hub initiative. The government's MSME and entrepreneurship policy defines microenterprises as entities with five or fewer employees and an annual turnover of Jamaica $10 million or less. This definition embraces a gamut of entrepreneurs, including the pan chicken man, the small farmer, the fruit vendor, and the local hairdresser. These are the creative and hardworking entrepreneurs that the government's policy is designed to support. The policy contains five major elements. They are as follows creating an enabling environment. This element speaks to the targeted for reforms through the National Competitiveness Council to make it easier to do business in Jamaica. Critical initiatives in the furtherance of this agenda include some of the following. The introduction of the business super form to reduce the length of time to conduct the administrative processes and allow seamless business registration at the company's office of Jamaica, instead of visiting several government offices, wasting time and resources. Two, the enactment of the Insolvency Act and the establishment of the Office of the Supervisor of Insolvency. These are critical to the implementation of a modern insolvency regime to make it easier for entrepreneurs with strong business ideas to bounce back after financial setbacks or the threatened financial um, setback. And thirdly, steps towards implementation of a modern intellectual property regime to ensure that investors and innovators can feel reasonably confident that their products will, and services will not be illegally copied or marketed. And as well, I want to mention specifically the amendment of the Copyright Act to extend the copyright term from 50 years to 95 years and the amendment of the Trademark Act to allow for the registration of trademarks in multiple countries through one centralized application procedure. All of these are critical. And just for those who are not watching and not looking at other things, during my budget debate, I tabled the, amendment, the, the amendments of the Copyright Act and that debate will start in short order. Addressing the challenge of financing solutions for the microproductive sector is an investment that the government must make. In this regard, I have appointed a task force comprising members of the private sector, academia, and government to work on finding a solution to this urgent problem. The task force is currently looking at putting in place a plan that is expected to improve access to capital. This plan includes repurposing 
and Recapitalizing Self-Start Fund and the Microinvestment Development Agency, MIDA, to ensure greater efficiency and cost reduction. Indeed, we recognize that the risk profile of MSME firms is a major impediment to financing. Implementing risk management and practices are critical elements of MIDA's new mandate. The establishment of the secured transaction regime, underpinned by the enactment of the Security Interest in Personal Property, or SIP Act, and the implementation of the, the accompanying collateral registry, are designated, are designated towards assisting with the facilitation of microfinancing. Indeed, if we aim to facilitate the progression of microenterprises, to becoming small enterprises and later medium enterprises, the hurdles in obtaining capital must be removed. An important piece of legislation for the sector is the Microcredit Act, which, when enacted, will provide for the licensing and regulation of privately owned microfinancers. The microfinance sector remains largely unregulated, and this hinders the development of the sector. The Microcredit Act, therefore, proposes that a regulator be established with the authority to issue directions or standards on transparent lending practices, credit administration, and other matters relating to operational issues, and will determine whether to accept or reject and revoke registrations. Capacity building is a major element of the policy. The implementation of the Small Business Development Center, the SBDC model, and the Mobile Business Clinic are therefore critical to this initiative, enhancing, enhancing business development support. The SBDC model is a managerial and technical support system for small businesses, which started in the USA over 35 years ago to provide small business owners with business development services and technical assistance. The Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, is the pilot for the model here in Jamaica. The Mobile Business Clinic, which is also being implemented through the JBDC to make business development and capacity services available to entrepreneurs and MSMEs across the island, serves to decentralize the provision of services from the metropolitan, metropolitan areas of Kingston and Montego Bay and throughout the length and breadth of Jamaica. These initiatives, along with work of key agencies, including the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, JIPO, the Bureau of Standards, BSJ, and I, I dare say I use the opportunity to indicate to small businesses and all businesses that the adoption of standards, implementation of standards are key to their success. The other element is fostering a culture of entrepreneurship and innovation. In order for entrepreneurship and innovation to become an entrenched part of our culture, we must take measures to foster the value of entrepreneurship within society and assist innovators to the stage that they can become entrepreneurs. In this regard, we are seeking through the Factories Corporation of Jamaica, another entity under the ministry, to work with the MSME sector to ensure that land or space become available to conduct administrative and incubation services. Initiatives such as today's earlier launch of the Small Business Expo are critical to ensuring that the average Jamaican sees entrepreneurship as an opportunity for wealth creation and economic contribution to the economy as a whole, instead of simply an alternative to finding employment or eating a food. There are also some, the other element, another key element of the, the policy is tackling cross-cutting socioeconomic and environmental issues. Collaboration among the private sector, public sector, and academia cannot be overstated. It is only when all stakeholders come on board will we be able to truly effect a positive outcome for the micro sector. 
In closing, I want to reiterate the importance of microsector and microfinancing. The sector remains a key contributor to job creation and growth in our economy. However, for us in Jamaica, its role must be viewed as part of the Logistic Hub Initiative in furthering our country's development. Indeed, we cannot ignore this sector if we want to achieve a sustained and inclusive growth. This in mind, I implore you all to attend the Caribbean Microfinance Forum, CMF6, in July 6 to 8 in Miami this year. The event is an opportunity for policymakers, academics, and development organizers to share ideas for the further development of the burgeoning microfinance sector in the Caribbean. I look forward to seeing you there as well. Thank you. The night is young. Uh, I'm going to invite Michelle Scott, the executive director of the CMFA, uh, to come and move the vote of thanks. Do not run away after. There is much food and wine um, after this, so don't run off. Have a drink. Um, it's on the IDB. No, I beg your pardon. It's on the CMFA. <laughs> so, Michelle, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it really was our pleasure to have hosted you this evening at the media launch for the 6th Caribbean Microfinance Forum. We really want to say a special thank you to the Honorable Minister for being here with us, as well as to Peter Moses and Ruth Malcolm for really hosting us and for all the, the hard work that went into the preparations for this evening. We also want to say thank you, of course, to the IDB, uh, Therese Turner-Jones, I'm seeing Wayne outside, thank you. Also, thanks to the media. It is a media launch, and we really want to say thank you to the, the, we have a strong media presence this evening, and we are really very happy for that. We're looking forward to you helping us to spread the word regarding the forum, and also beyond that, to help us in raising awareness for microfinance and the impact, the role that microfinance has to play in the development of regional economies. A special thank you to all our specially invited guests, Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing the afternoon with us. And as Mark said, don't run off. And I look forward to seeing you in Miami. Thank you.